Oh, I should have had a mug of tea. Heck with that, I'm lazy. Hey there, everybody. So, I have caught up on Picard. And the last time I talked about this, it was the first episode, and I have now seen through the sixth episode. And this is not going to be an episode-by-episode -episode detailed breakdown, review, or commentary. This is going to be my thoughts on the series overall, now that we are over halfway through the first season. And uh, I definitely have, overall positive feelings about this. Quick reminder, my own relationship with Star Trek, I have always liked it, but I've never done a deep dive into it, really any of the variants of it. I know the classic series best from the movies. I know the next generation best of any of the series. Um, I really haven't seen very much of DS9. I've seen a little bit of Voyager. I saw one episode of Enterprise. I'm like, nah, not for me. I haven't gotten to Discovery yet. I'm softer on the uh, reboot. <laughs> Star Trek movies than most people are, and now we have Picard. So Picard opened really well. I really liked episode one. You can go back and watch my review of that if you want detailed information on that. But I thought it did a really good job of giving us a, a somewhat darker, more complicated look at this world without feeling like it was undermining what we had seen up to this point. It didn't feel like it betrayed the character of Picard. It didn't really feel like it betrayed the world that he was a part of either. Picard was always the idealist in the world that he operated in. That was, I honestly, in my head canon, that's part of why in The Next Generation he was put on a ship out in a five-year mission as opposed to being, you know, in the normal sphere of things. He was sent out there like, look, go take your ideals and go out there and spread those around. Stop being here and telling us how we're supposed to do this work. That's headcanon for me, sure, but that sort of conflict it was always kind of there. And for that reason, I don't even feel like they're like, no, they've ruined the Federation. There's all, you know, there's, they're not perfect like, the Federation has not always been seen as perfect. Not, it's not even in TNG. The crew of the Enterprise was usually incredibly homogenous, and you might take that as a microcosm for the Federation, but that's a leap. You don't have to make that assumption. And there's a lot of interesting things being done with the plot, and I also like all the stuff that it's picking up from the series up to this point. I mean, a huge part of this world building is the destruction of the Romulan home and the mass evacuation, which is what set off the Kelvin timeline in the reboot. Like, they're tying in a lot of stuff, and surprisingly organically, basically just picking up the story in, in the universe where these things happened, and just picking up the story a bit down the line, and we get references and mentions of those things, and it's very cool. And the other thing that's kind of neat is they have Picard teaming up with basically a crew of new characters who are unique to this show. Um, now, that's good for a couple reasons. The first is this could have very easily turned into a reunion show, we still have that to a certain degree. You know, we had a cameo from Data in the in the pilot episode. At this point, if you haven't seen through episode six, like there's probably got to be some degree of spoilers coming out of my mouth. Just like know that, okay? Um, but later on, you have Seven of Nine turning up, uh, and they've teased at the end of this most recent one that the next episode is going to have Riker. So you know there is some of that in there, um, but at the same time, the most of the core cast that is orbiting around Picard himself are all new, which gives this its own flavor. So it has Picard back, you know, as that moral, righteous, upright, forthright, right <laughs> guy, you know, coming in to do the right thing. And because that that's our that's our pillar. That's what everything is centered around and you've got all the other characters just sort of 
in his orbit, they don't have to be the people we already know. And in fact, it's slightly more interesting if they're not. Now, some of these people he has history with, some of them he doesn't. We've got uh, someone who used to be under his command when he was still with Starfleet, whose name is Raffi. Um, and she's, she's decent, she's good. Um, she's got a lot of baggage, clearly. Uh, there's also the pilot for the ship they're on named Rios, who's got a little bit of a Han Solo thing going, a little bit of that Devil May Care, slightly beaten down by the circumstances of the world thing going on. Uh, we've got Agatha, who was the doctor, um, who studied synthetic life, who I mentioned back when I talked about the first episode, I was like, I like her, and I like that it looks like she's gonna stick around, which she does. There's also Elnor, who is a young Romulan. I can't remember the name of the order he's a part of. They're basically sort of this warrior monk thing. And, like, what he is is kind of interesting. I feel like he's the weak link as far as the characters go, though. The problem is Elnor is just very... He's very bland and predictable. He doesn't have a lot of presence the i don't know how much of it is the performer and how much of it is the writing but there just isn't a lot of charisma or screen presence from him and he kind of needs that because the characterization is very generic you know he's it, it, it's a bit classic vulcan even though he's a romulan you know the bit sort of taking everything very literally and needing stuff explained to him and not lying and 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 all this sort of stuff and personality. So it's like it's like they turned Spock into a samurai, but he's he's just kind of bland, uh, which which is a shame because I think some of the some of the lore at the heart of of how he operates and everything else I actually think is rather interesting. Uh, so that's your that's your core group. But then we've also got over on the board cube. Sorry, the artifact. We've got Soji, who is the sister of Daj, who died in the opening episode. Um, and Soji is working to try and help basically deprogram and unassimilate um, cut off members of the Borg Collective. Which this thing also picks up quite a bit from the, the aftermath of the Borg. You know, we get mentions of Picard's assimilation, of Locutus, and in addition to that, there's some emphasis on nobody trusts ex-Borg. You know, the, in which, you know, you, it's kind of hard to blame them, but it's like, yeah, no, that, uh, that sucks. People don't choose to be part of this thing. So, there's that going on, and there's, uh, there's Narek, is a Romulan spy type who is hooking up with Soji and is basically trying to extract information from her. Now, he has the intention to kill her, but he wants to get information out of her first. Uh, and he's part of a society that I, I'm curious to know how much more we're going to find out about their motivations on this because right now, so far, what we have is just being presented as they hate all synthetic life. And for that reason, they want to kill her and anything else that might be vaguely similar to her. And I'm hoping we get a little bit more detail on their motivation than that because otherwise it just becomes they are hardcore you know, fundamentalists in their belief system. And that's not to say you can't have that as a villain and you can't have that as your antagonist, but it's just uninteresting. You know, why are they doing this? Because they really believe that these things are evil. That's, that's it? That, that's the only thing that's driving all this? They just super believe? Okay. I mean, like, like, like I said, you can do it. I just find it's very dull uh, as a storytelling option to go that way. Um, but part of a neat side effect to the fact that the background, I'm sorry, not the background, the supporting cast are primarily new faces. It took me a little time to clock some of the people who did return. And once I did clock them, I'm like, oh, that's neat. Like Maddox. The doctor, the professor that they are spending like the first five episodes trying to reach and find 
who was the, the leading expert on synthetic life and positronic brains and all that, who was the guy from that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, The Measure of a Man, where Data was put on trial to determine whether or not he had humanity and would be allowed to have his own agency. This was the guy who wanted Data to lose that case so that he could pull him apart and study him. That, it took me, like I said, a couple episodes to finally have that click, but I was like, oh, cool. And then later on, on the Borg Reclamation Project, we have Hugh. Hugh, that's, ah, man. Like, and, and again, I didn't catch it right off, but I caught it a little bit later. And it just made me smile. Uh, and like I said, all this stuff feels very organic. I really am digging it. The, um, some of the visuals in this are really cool as well. There, there's this great bit having this, this imposed image, you know, because of sort of a transparent screen of Locutus right over current Elder Picard's face. And it is unsettling. You can definitely see that uh, it unsettles him. Um, there's some cool stuff like that. It looks good. The music's good. I, I'm digging the vibe and the feel. There's really only one character that I'm not really vibing off all that much, but like the show doesn't depend on him excessively heavily. If I had a major criticism of the thing overall, it's that the pacing is a little too slow for its own good. Not to say that you can't have something that is deliberately paced by the, like this, and I'm not saying like it should be a major action scene every 10 minutes. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that because we know where Picard and his crew are trying to get to, and more than that, like, we know what's there. We're seeing it. So it's not even like they're on a quest to find this thing. It's like, we know what the thing is. We keep cutting back to it. So how long it's taken them to get there is... It, it doesn't quite gel. It would flow better if we didn't know what the destination was like. Because since we are effectively all already there as an audience, it makes us a little impatient for the main characters to get there so that we can, we can join up with them. Like, in my personal opinion, I find in general that I connect most with the goal and quest and motivations of characters who I'm on the same page as. And I'm not just talking beliefs, I mean in terms of my knowledge. If I know way more than the characters involved, I get bored or annoyed because I'm waiting for them to catch up to where I am. And this show does suffer from that a little bit. The the audience is in the know on way more than any of the hero characters are. Well, at least so far as we know. Something's going on with Agatha. I don't really know the deal there yet. I'm, and I'm not going to get into speculation. But overall, you know, the Picard has spent the first five episodes or so trying to figure out where is this twin? Is she even alive? How can I get, how can I get there? And like, well, we know who the twin is. We know where she is. We know she's like, we know the answer to all his questions. And so we're waiting for him to catch up. And in addition to that, he's still stopping to take detours to fill out his crew by picking up folks like Elnor. And it's, it's just, it's just a pacing that doesn't quite work when we know as much about the destination as we do. If the destination was more nebulous, you could get away with this. But given the way it is, it it is slow in a way that did not have to happen and is completely separate from the idea of having a more thoughtful pacing to the whole thing. But th this isn't quite the issue that I'm having. It's not that it's thoughtfully paced. It's that I don't want to be this far ahead of the characters. So that's like my one gripe with it, but big scheme, considering how many things could have gone wrong with this entire concept of moving things forward, having Picard be this old, um, basically having the story pivot on uh, Data's legacy in addition to all the stuff going on with the Romulans and really reminding us what a Cold War analog they were. Yeah, there's a lot that could have gone wrong here and 
that's really the the one massive complaint that I have with a minor complaint on one character. I think that's a pretty good showing so far. I'll be very curious to see how this wraps up. Once it does, I may do one more video with my thoughts on it uh, towards the end. But for right now, I think I will wrap it up there. Picard! You caught up on it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Bunch of stuff to do as well. Like, subscribe. I have a Patreon. That would be incredibly helpful. Uh, and all the usual stuff. But you don't have to do any of that because end of the day, you're at the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.